Not only is this the 50th anniversary of that dark day in April when Dr. King was assassinated, it's also the 50th anniversary of the Poor People's Campaign. And I'm going to use this weekend as a launch uh, as I joined with the Los Angeles organizers of the 50th anniversary for the Poor People's Campaign to organize as Dr. King did from the streets. My colleague from San Diego talked about feeling inspired when she attends the Dr. King events and I have to say that for me inspiration is hard to come by these days. And so as I thought about this weekend's activities, I began to really think about why he was taken from us and what fuels our current debate and dialogue around race in this country. And I have concluded and, and fundamentally believe that he was assassinated because he was deemed a threat. Dr. King, if you've seen images and pictures of him, you know he wasn't a large man in stature. I don't think he cleared six feet. So he wasn't perceived as a physical threat. He was feared based on a far more deadly weapon that he possessed. And that was his intellectual capacity. And so I hope that as we commit ourselves, as we go into our districts this weekend and participate in marches and go to breakfast, that we not misuse and abuse the words of Dr. King, that we not extrapolate a sentence or two from one speech that he gave throughout his very short lifetime of 39 years, but that we dig deep, that we hold ourselves, our colleagues, our elected officials at all levels of government accountable to the words they speak, that we have a higher level of expectation in terms of the intellectual capacity of the people we elect to lead this great nation. That's what I'm gonna do the next several days in honor of Dr. King.